second founding father of psychology is William James. So you have your notes ready. You're taking your little slot notes. We'll have a quiz in practice after. All right, let's jump right into this a short lesson. William James. So first off, I'm going to give birth and de death. Remember, um, you're not going to be testing on this, but I just want to give you context. B born um, 1842, death 1910. So uh, this just gives you context. Late 19th century is when psychology is really getting going. That's when these guys were active. Great quote by James right above my head. Um, the greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. That's, that's powerful. Cause you think about that. Like you're really stressed. Like, like say I'm stressed and be like, you know what? I choose to go read a novel and just take my mind off what I'm doing, the, the stress. I choose to go watch you know, a sports game to take my mind off my stress. Like we can choose to go do something else to take our mind off the stress. That's a great, I mean, that, that's, that's something to live by. I love it. Okay, cool. All right, let's keep going. Nationality, American. Matter of fact, he is considered the father of American psychology. Founder of American psychology. You're going to see the roots in psychology are very German and American, um, heavily German and American. Uh, first person um, to offer a university psychology course. He's the first person to offer a university psychology course in the United States. First person to offer a university psychology course in the U.S. Matter of fact, uh, right above my head, right here, um, you can see William James Hall at Harvard University, where he taught. And so if you become a famous psychologist and, and father some massive subject area, or maybe a psychologist, I don't know, um, then you get a building named after you. How cool is that? That's how cool it is. You teach and you um, become famous like that. That's pretty good. Me, uh, you know, after I leave, um, sadly, I, probably no one will remember. <laughs> That, that's where it'll go for me. Woo! I'll just retire to like some beautiful landscape, um, maybe Arizona. I still, I'm kind of obsessed with Arizona. And then um, I'll, I'll just enjoy the rest of my years. Okay, here we go. Maybe you'll send me a note someday and say, Mr. Iggerson, I remember you. And I'll be like, that's great. All right, cool. Here we go. Next part. All right, um, William James. Um, he disagreed with Wilhelm Wundt. And by the way, if you just want to write Wundt, you're welcome to just write Wundt. But he disagreed with Wundt. Why? Um, because it was over consciousness. All right. He said that consciousness, um, James, James said that consciousness must be studied as a whole, not broken into parts. Remember, Wundt wanted to create like this periodic element table thing, whatever it's called in chemistry. I forget because it's been like 45 years since I've been in chemistry. Well, not that long, but pretty darn close. Um, and anyway, but he wanted to create a periodic table of, of psychology, uh, of consciousness and break it down into parts. And, and James says you should look at it as a whole. You don't break it into parts. You look at it as a whole. And he also argued something that starts to sound really, really, really modern psychology, which is that touch I was telling you about that. That's kind of cool. Um, argument, the argument of psychology should focus on behavior and why a person does something. That's big. Because that really gets at psychology, right? You're you're in a relationship or you, you have problems with anger or you have problems with depression, whatever the, the case may be. And that that creates behavior. You you do things as a result of it. And the question is why? And if you can be introspective, using a phrase from Vunt, and really kind of get at that, that can really help you overcome issues. And I think that is part of the power of psycho psychology and a good psychologist or therapist will really help you kind of delve into that. But you also have to be honest with yourself. And man, let me tell you, you'll, you'll, that's a, you'll meet a lot of humans in your life and a lot of humans just aren't really honest about themselves. Um, so that's, that's difficult, but if you're honest with yourself and, and that, by the way, introspection is honesty with yourself, then, then this can really get at something. Um, by the way, this becomes known as functionalism. So we had structuralism breaking down the consciousness into parts, which was, you know, like taste and smell and whatnot. And now we have functionalism. And the question with functionalism in, and you might write this down, uh, if I don't have it on your sheet of paper, just put off side, but how do people function in society? Like how do we function? How do we do around others? Do we function? Are we are we dysfunctional? Um, and, and so that's the question that Vunt is getting at. And that, 
that, my friends, is really starting to get into some modern psychology. That's some cool stuff. All right, that's the first lesson for James. We're done. Doesn't take long. See you at the next lesson. Next lesson.